Today we will be looking into graduation coming up and what that will look like, and then discuss the school's decision to stop conducting contact tracing for students and quarantining less people. Then we will be updated on the latest school sports news with Ashlyn Roberts. Also, we will mosey on outside to discuss what the weather will look like with Ina and Ellen. And lastly, we will become more educated on the popular hot topic, Dancing Under the Stars event, and discuss the pros and cons of the event itself. Hello, I'm Madison Gulliver, a junior here at Cedar Springs High School. Hello, I'm Nick Poison, a sophomore here. How's your day going? I'm doing fantastic. I have golf practice after school. We have three more weeks of school and summer break is coming. How about you? I'm good. My track season is coming to an end, so I'll have more free time after school as well as my AP classes are over, so I won't need to be worrying about all the schoolwork. Are you excited for graduation coming up? Yes, it is guaranteed to look different this year due to COVID restrictions. And Madison Lane, McLean Beacons, and Morgan Llewellyn tell us about how it looked different. With the end of the school year sneaking up on us, the countdown for seniors has begun. Only a few more weeks left until graduation here at Cedar Springs High School. The student body and the staff are so excited to watch our seniors throw their caps and start their life journey. Due to COVID-19, many changes have been made to protect our students and our faculty. With a tough year, we know that graduation is very thrilling. However, we do have to keep many safety precautions in place. We interviewed two seniors and asked them a few questions about how they felt about graduation and how COVID has affected their experience so far. I made to my future plans is I decided to do online college next year just because I don't want to have to go to school and then risk like being put on quarantine or like having the school shut down and I'd rather just do it in my own way rather than having to go somewhere and do it. And then some changes I made to my graduation plans is I have to do a bunch of stuff with my family before because you can only have two people at graduation so we have to figure out who those two people are. Um, COVID has affected the way I or how I'm going to graduate because one, I wasn't able to go to my last day of high school ever because I was placed on quarantine due to exposure. And then I don't really know how graduation's gonna work. Like we don't know if we're gonna be able to like all be there at the same time or if we're gonna have to sit six feet apart and then everyone just walks across the stage. But I know that we can only have limited capacities. The code has affected graduation because it could affect how many people are there and like how we graduate, like who can walk across the stage at what time. And it's just totally different compared to what other people got in previous years. Um, how COVID affected my graduation party is we're going to have to make sure that it's in an outside area so that it's COVID friendly. And there's just this small flow of people so that it cuts down on exposure. Um, a COVID-19 graduation would look like the normal see of it all, like having people there, just masks and everything. Because ultimately we have to get back to normal at some point and I feel like it's time. With that being said, I know that everybody in the Cedar Springs District is very proud of all our seniors for making it through this hard year. And we're very thankful for having a graduation and being able to do this, even with the circumstances that we have. Ultimately, we all must do our part by wearing our masks and keeping socially distanced to help this graduation go on and keep everybody safe and healthy. It's good to see that we can still enjoy the thrill of graduation with the safety rules set by the school. Yeah, definitely. Very exciting to look forward to. And we'll be right back with the discussion of why the school has decided to stop quarantining after this brief break.
struggle to choose between your cereals, so much to the point that you just decide to make eggs. Frosted Loops provides nutritional value and energy for your whole day. Children of all ages enjoy it, even babies like this one. Frosted Loops can be eaten with different types of fruits to add to the nutritional value. Next time you go out, remember to get Frosted Loops for a better day. Compared with other cereals, Frosted Loops provides 30% more nutrition than the leading brands, adding a more healthier balance to your day. Making you feel like a better you. Welcome back to Cedar Springs TV Show. We're really glad to have you back. Hey Maddie, how, is you, how have you handled quarantine this year? If I'm honest, I didn't like it. But the good news is, is there's a lesser need for quarantining due to no more contact tracing at the high school. So next we'll be looking into why the school board has stopped the quarantining of students for the rest of the school year and how others feel about it. This year, COVID has massively affected students in the way we learn. Previously, when a student tested positive for COVID-19, those around them were contact traced and quarantine was mandatory for 14 days. Once quarantined, they would do all their learning online where they would zoom into classes. However, new procedures have been put in place that don't require mandatory quarantine for students who have been contact traced. Contact tracing still occurs, but the parents of the person are contacted and they are encouraged to quarantine. However, it is no longer required. Here's the opinions of some students and one of our teachers on the new policy. I was quarantined once for three days because it was believed my brother had COVID and I was quarantined again for roughly three weeks due to contact tracing. I was quarantined two times. One was, I think, two weeks. The other time I was in like April or something and I got quarantined because I was contact traced for like a week. I feel it is an unnecessary amount of time, although I do believe we, it is good to quarantine when needed. I think it's a little, it could be under or overstated a little because like you could be sort of by someone. Do I really have to be two weeks off because I was kind of near this person who tested positive who wasn't even at school for the past week? I believe it was effective, but I don't believe it was effective enough to justify the lost time. I think, I mean, the quarantine process is sort of twofold really. Like I get the necessity of it at times, um, but I also get the sort of unfairness of it sometimes. And I think uh, removing kids and moving kids out of classes and having to contact trace and do everything like that is, is taxing on a lot of individuals. Even though it is a necessity, it does sort of take a lot out of the kids in the school and the staff. It's good for that small percentage that it has affected, but other than that, I think it takes a more adverse effect most of the time. I, at this point, I absolutely think it's a good idea to remove that, remove that contact tracing, the mandatory quarantine part of it for sure. Um, and I think it, it allows kids and students and, and things like that to get back to a little bit no, more normality in their life. We just got rid of it a week ago, but the number of kids I have in classes now is, is greatly higher. So kids aren't missing out on the, on the educational opportunities of school and being able to participate in those things as well. So I, I, think, it's, I think it's definitely going to be a benefit. But I do think the negative aspect of kids when they go to their quarantine process of not being, in, in not being involved in classes, not being remote learners, not, not jumping in their canvas, not doing work, um, I would say most of the kids that I've had that have had that have been on quarantine um, have not been actively contributor active contributors in the class and course, um, and I think it's hurt them academically. Hopefully, this new rule will help keep students and staff safe as well as in school to learn. It's good to see that our school is still maintaining a safe mindset, and we are able to implicate looser restrictions after a rough year. It really is a blessing carrying on. Up next, we'll be going to Sports Corner with Ashlyn, keeping us on the latest school sports news. Ashlyn? Good morning for CSTV Sports. I'm Ashlyn Roberts, and I'm going to be your sports anchor for today. Spring sports are on the move. Baseball is in full swing. Softball is in... Softball is on a roll, and soccer is kicking. Now let's take a look at home sports, or home scores. <laughs> Tuesday night, girls varsity soccer won against Greenville three to nothing and also hosted Ace Ocasa night. On Thursday, girls soccer took their second win of the week with six nothing against Muskegon Oak Ridge and Merced Ottawa Hills eight nothing last night in the conference tournament. Transitioning into baseball, they lost both they lost both games nine to seven and two to nothing in their doubleheader against South Christian on Tuesday. Moving into our softball girls, they lost 17-4 in both games at versus South Christian. And last but not least, girls tennis lost 7-1 against Thornapple Kellogg Tuesday night and lost 6-2 against Lowell last night. 
Now let's turn it over to Jaden Carter who interviewed the girls soccer team on how their thoughts on how they felt as a player and as a team. This year at Cedar Springs High School, the women's soccer team has felt like they have had one of their best seasons in a while. Everyone from their players to their coach has felt this is their year to come out on top. Currently with a winning record and leading their conference, everyone on the team has felt they have improved as a team and as individual players. And this season has been going really good. I feel like I've been improving a lot and like forming new bonds with people on the team. This year as a team, I think we're doing pretty well, but um, there's definitely spots where we can improve, especially with playing like four teams in a row that we could in the Mercy. We just haven't played our best. The players and coaching staff on the Cedar Springs team have been thrilled to have a near normal season. However, COVID has still made some effects on the team, and have also changed how they do some things. COVID, we've been doing a lot of things differently on the field and at practices. They look a lot different than rather before COVID. We've been having to spread out and keep distance and like being really like aware of who we're with and like things like that. A common theme between all the players was how important their coaches were to them. Whether that be for smaller things at practice or bigger things, they all mentioned how important their coaches were to them and what their coaches made them strive for. I think him and Maude, because they're like the two coaches that are there quite often, affect our team a lot because I think we carry a lot of weight with what they say and I think they put a lot of pressure on us to be the best that we can. And I think that has affected our playing a little bit because we feel like we need to be this really good team and we just feel like we disappoint them if we don't live up to those expectations. This team is clearly one of the best out there right now and has a lot of potential going into the postseason. They have a high chance to win the district tournament and even a possibility to win states. Everyone on the team has very high hopes, especially the coach, Mr. H. Uh, I think when you look at the postseason and the season we have, I think the team, realistically, if everything goes well and everything goes at the right time, we can get all the girls to sort of peak at the right time. Um, and always you need a little bit of luck because with soccer, sometimes you, you're not the, you're the better team and you still lose. It just happens that way sometimes. So a little bit of luck and little stuff like that. I mean, I mean, I don't see any reason why why there isn't the potential of playing in a state championship game, which is which is crazy to say. Hopefully everything goes as planned and this team has a wonderful end to their season and makes a good run in their postseason. Welcome back. It's good to hear what our soccer girls had to say. Good luck all Red Hawk athletes in finishing up spring sports. It's a great day to be a Red Hawk. Now let's turn it back over to Nick and Maddie after the short break. Welcome back. Next, we will be going to Ina and Ellen outside for the weather. Where are you right now, Ina? 
I'm at the top of the bleacher. What is the forecast for today? Um, as you can see, it's really outside right now. The temperature is like degrees, and it's just going to be a good day. We're looking for a good day. All right. Do you know what will the graduations weather look like this year? It's going to be really similar like today. It's going to be a little bit cloudy, too, so it's going to be a really good day for the seniors, and I hope they have a good graduation. All right. Thank you, Lina. As a junior, are you excited for prom? Yes. Even though the school prom has canceled, many students are having their own proms or creating prom-like events. Like one of the events that the families here in Cedar Springs have called Dancing Under the Stars. I've heard about that. In fact, our next segment is focused on Dancing Under the Stars and the pros and cons that come from it. With COVID ending many schools' official dances and events, students and parents decide to take action in their own hands by hosting an unofficial prom outside of school. Teachers and students within the school have their own beliefs of the situation. Uh, I think prom not being hosted by the school is, is, is a tough thing for a lot of kids to grasp. I mean, it's one of the events that everybody looks forward to, everybody wants to deal with, everybody wants to go to. Um, but I think with the restrictions and all the stuff going on, I think it's what the school has to do. I mean, they've got to follow all the restrictions that are set down by the MDHHS um, and the Kent County, Kent County and the Kent ISD and all that stuff. And it's just for us to, for the school to have a prom the way that probably kids wanted to have a prom, I don't think it was possible. Um, I would say that the unofficial prom doesn't necessarily have an effect on me. If anything, it makes me happier just knowing the option that we did have with the school. Um, wasn't necessarily a prom that I was wanting to go to and it wasn't like anything that I've seen before and it's just nice to have something at least one of my years because I didn't even get a prom last year so I think kids should have prom you know what I mean like I think to put it really simple I think kids should have a prom um, but what we've learned in the last 16 months is we're not in a typical normal year anymore it's a different culture and it's a different shift and and you've got all the issues that our that our community has to have and when i say community i don't just mean cedar springs i mean cedar springs kent county grand rapids michigan united states the world like it's a whole different thing we have um and i think in the scheme of things um with everything else i think losing out on that is a bad situation for people um, it's a bad situation for kids but realistically um, i graduated in 1997 and i can't tell you what happened at prom like, I can't recall that or bring it back. Um, I remember more of my memories of my friends hanging out, doing the stuff that I like to do uh, more than that. I would say the positives that come out of it are definitely getting the experience because it's a once in a lifetime type of thing and being able to socialize and have fun and meet new people. Uh, probably COVID, just, just the effect of getting people sick, maybe because of a large group. Probably that's my only, that comes to knowledge. Um, it's definitely going to look different. It's going to be smaller, I think. Um, this is the first prom that we've had outside. Um, and I, I really don't know what it's going to look like. I'm not sure yet. We don't really have everything planned out. So hopefully it's good, but I'm sure it's definitely not going to be the same as previous years. Despite the circumstances of COVID, students are grateful for having a chance at prom, even if it might be a little different than most years. Breaking news just in, tomorrow we will be having a school spirit day of school colors or class colors for the seniors for their last day. In other news, it's good to weigh the pros and cons of an event like prom during the child year that we've had this year and since we have to be extra cautious. It is really good to be extra aware and safe of the current events of occurring in our school. I agree. Everything talked about today has its own significance that we should be aware of, and I'm glad all the people in our TV Pro team put together such a great show. It was a really amazing show. Anyways, that marks the end of our show this morning. Thank you for joining us and watching Cedar Springs TV. It's a great day to be a Red Hawk.